Hi, painters. Um, tonight, I'm going to talk to you about underpainting, which is the first stage of working with any painting. You guys are going to be doing specifically acrylic paint, working with the still life. Um, and so layer number one, here we go. Um, in underpainting, I'm going to share some examples first. Here we go. Is a lot like a gesture. So let's first look at a finished painting. So this is where we're headed, where eventually, layer on top of layer on top of layer, we're going to have full color, a beautiful complexity of color, beautiful range of values from lights to darks, um, and, a, and a nice thick application of acrylic paint where we don't see the canvas at all, and we don't really see our underpainting um, so much by the end of the painting as well. Um, Okay, so remember back to gestures, very, very, very beginning of our class together. Um, we focused on this idea of sort of like a quickish, intuitive focus on shape and shadow primarily. Um, a few lines in some of these examples too to help us kind of create edges. Um, before adding in values. Here's, here's a gesture that's primarily lined with lots of movement in it. Um, another where you can start to see it, be, the figure become a little more um, obvious what's there because there's more value where we've got shadow, we've got lights, we've got midtones, um, and we have a general sense of the shape of the figure coming to be. So, uh, the analogy, or yeah, the analogy um, of gesture to drawing um, relates to underpainting to painting. So the gestural form in a painting is this underpainting. Here's an example of one that I did um, in a fall semester with some pumpkins that I had collected. So you can see an arrangement of three pumpkins zoomed in on. I chose ultramarine blue for my underpainting. Um, and in this particular one, it's fairly simplified, where I'm really just working with three tones and simplifying it into lightest, darkest, and middle tone. Here's another one that's one step further, obviously different objects, um, a tin pitcher and some eggs, which are both white. Um, with some mid-tone in the background. Um, it doesn't really matter if at the underpainting stage you guys can tell that these are eggs or not. I know that they were because um, I did the painting and, and the idea is just to give you a sense of, okay, these are the shapes of my objects. This is approximately where they're going to go and this is approximately the tonal or value range that I'm working with here. Um, this particular underpainting also um, has one step further in it, so don't be confused by this brown. This is just my next layer where I start to put on the background. Um, here's another one that's another step further, so you can see that the red is my underpainting. Um, and then I've gone ahead, once I was satisfied with my underpainting, um, to do this green in the background and then start to work on this base coming forward to the foreground. Here's um, a very similar composition, the same still life objects, but further developed. So you can start to see, um, I'm just going right on top of the underpainting. I don't see the underpainting by the end, so I'm not attached to it really. It's just a place for me to begin. Um, and then I work from the back to the front, kind of filling in color that away. So this is one that I created today that I'm gonna share a video with of how it was done. Um, and this one is probably the most developed underpainting of the ones that I've shared with you just now because I don't have any white of the canvas. I've completely filled it in from my lightest values kind of up here all the way to my darkest values sort of here. And I have a really good sense more or less of where everything is and how light and dark it needs to be. Um, 
different than that first one that was like a simplified just kind of three tones. I've got more tones going on here. I'm sort of using the words tones and values interchangeably right now. I hope that that's not confusing, but value um, is the lightness and darkness of a color as we've talked about a lot in class. Here's the um, objects that I was working with and approximately the composition. It changed a little bit when I started my, my underpainting, but just so you can see, um, I'm working with some origami paper cranes and uh, mandarin orange. Okay, so popping out of that. I'm gonna share a couple of videos with you, three videos. my cranes but I want to share this one first um, a simple one here I'm gonna speed it up for you okay so I'm just working with red and I'm just adding water and in this particular underpainting and still life arrangement um, I'm working with lighter objects um, three aluminum cans that are light in color. And I'm kind of treating it like a negative space drawing and painting around the edges first because my focus when I begin um, is on the darkest parts. And on the lighter parts and the details, I'm either leaving totally white if they're white in reality, um, or I'm diluting the paint that I'm using with water and also using that blue towel to dab up um, some paint where I want to kind of pull it out to lighten just like you would with an eraser like a kneaded eraser so I'm gonna go back a little bit and slow it down just a little bit more because I think it's helpful to know that a rag whatever rag paper towel towel you're working with um, while the acrylic paint is still wet can definitely be used like an eraser so that's a really handy tip I'm just going to slow it down so you can see that piece again. Just dabbed it with that towel. I think I'll do it again in a moment. Okay. All right, so that's one. This one I'm going to share with you from a, a painting from start to finish. Here's my still life set up. Here I'm ready to go on my easel. Okay. And in this particular one, I'm using yellow for my underpainting, which in general, um, I don't necessarily recommend. Let me slow this down a little. Um, unless it's like a really deep okra yellow like I'm using in this particular one. Um, just because the contrast between yellow and the white of the canvas just is not, is not a high contrast. Um, in this one, I'm working with a grouping of vegetables, some tomatoes, a squash, some garlic. I'm really paying attention to where the objects are, occasionally doing this measuring, right, that you learned earlier in the semester, to get a sense of proportions of things, the size of the negative space between the objects, and thinking very much about where is it light, where is it dark. I think I had to mix the yellow with another color in order to get it as dark as I did for the layer I'm doing now. So I'll speed it up now so that you can start to see I'm playing with the background colors. So again, this idea of underpainting, then background, then objects coming forward front to back. And the, the reason I teach it that way is because we're working with acrylic, which different than oils, dries pretty quickly. Um, and when you are blending colors together, you want your paint to be wet. Um, 
So this, if, if you've worked in oils before, that sort of like sequence may not have been how you've learned it before, but try, try it for this as my suggestion. I just had a little music to play for you during this. <sighs> Ukulele or something. <laughs> Okay, I'll speed it up even further so we can see it through to the end. Really focused on lights and darks. Focused on mixing colors, but not obsessing about making it the exact color, more interested in the value range. Using that white when I need to for those nice highlights, which we know are everything. Lots of other color. Recognizing that that squash is certainly not just yellow. There's a lot more going on in there in terms of color. <laughs> the focusing of the camera makes it look like the painting is has like a heartbeat almost. The little flower at the end, the thing that's closest to the front. And there's my painting. Okay, last video I'm going to share with you is the one from today. Here's the cranes. Start at the very beginning, start slow and speed up again. So Sorry for the strange orientation here. I'm just, again, trying to zoom into, this is what I'm working with. It's just some small objects on a little table beside my studio table. And then I fuss with the camera for a second. Okay, so right here is my viewfinder, right? Which I use occasionally to pick up and just um, look through to my objects. Um, to help me compose, help me crop, help me remember like where I wanted things to fall when I was first imagining my design here. And I've got one color, I'm using red because the objects that I have that I'm working with, yes, there is also blue, which I could use, um, but they seem to have kind of like a magenta rosy tone to them. So I picked red. Ultramarine is also great. And I'm just using water to dilute the acrylic in the same way that we use watercolors. Um, on that same thought, watercolors could be a great way for you to practice in your sketchbook before you start this underpainting if you're feeling a little iffy about it. Um, so feel free to do some like small versions, some thumbnail examples in your sketchbook just using watercolor first or playing with, you know, you could also just go straight into acrylic. Okay, speed this up a little more. I recognized at this point, like, oh gosh, there's a lot of angles here and a lot of um, diagonals. So I started with more line than I have in some of my other ones, just because there's like so much going on, I needed to parse it out. Um, but you'll see really quickly here, I start to fill it in with value and line is not my focus the remainder of the time. It's shape and shadow. Using my initial lines as a guide. And again, using that towel to blot up areas where I realize I want them lighter. And in the areas that I can, if it, you know, because you can only do that while the paint is wet. Um, and being sure next to go to my darkest areas 
my darker areas and fill those in with the paint at full strength, no water, so that I have um, a nice rich color. So again, that towel can kind of be like a kneaded eraser. It's just really handy to know at the beginning. I'm really filling in all the areas best that I can. And at this point, it's important to tell you that um, you're underpainting. You are never married to. You are never stuck with it. Um, with the remaining layers of the paint as you go forward because ultimately you're not going to see it again. So I am in no way treating this underpainting like now it's a paint by color and I'm going to never look at my still life again. I'm constantly looking at my still life, constantly going back, forth, back, forth, back, forth at no matter what stage of the painting because there's no way in doing the underpainting, which this one took me I think about 15 minutes. Yours is probably going to take longer, so just consider that, but um, in those 15 minutes, there's absolutely no way I can observe and see everything about um, my still life objects. I um, will learn far more about what they look like, the actual angles, the actual proportions, the more that I paint and the more layers I go on top of it. So um, these shapes are very likely to change slightly. They're very likely to get reworked um, as, I, as I go, next layer, next layer, next layer. So please keep that in mind, that the underpainting is a guide for you to get started, but it is in no way um, the absolute and final like place where everything is gonna be. Because um, you'll figure that out as time goes on. All right, have fun with this. That's the whole point of doing art to begin with um, and expressing yourself. So please do enjoy um, your first layer of your still life painting. Bye.